let's go watch it in 2D. No, let's go watch it in 3D. But if we watch it in 3D, then is it worth the cost? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. Hello, hello, hello. This is Adolf Vega from 3D or 2D.com, and today I'm reviewing Rogue One, a Star Wars story. As always, I'll talk about this movie without spoilers and with the 3D element first. So the 3D element of this movie is absolutely terrible. It's just pathetic and a total waste of time and money. I honestly forgot about the 3D visuals for the vast majority of this movie. Occasionally you might see a rifle pop out of the screen because it's you know the 3D element, but the focus is on the character holding the rifle and the ri actual rifle itself is blurry and ugly looking. So it just kind of is a distraction and is forgettable aspect of this movie. The layers of depth 3D is kind of pathetic too, it's like maybe two or three. So it's not really really noticeable um, unless you go for one specific scene. This specific scene has characters look down upon a tall structure and the 3D does give that scene have some depth to it. But overall it's just kind of worthless. And I was pretty upset when I walked out, thinking that the trailers before the movie looked better than the actual movie itself. So this movie has some terrible 3D, and you're just probably better off just to watch it in 2D. Now onto the movie itself. It's really difficult to actually review and discuss this movie without having spoilers and direct references to other Star Wars movies. It's kind of a standalone movie, but it really isn't because it depends on you knowing other things that happen in other Star Wars movies. The plot revolves around the Rebel Alliance as they try to defeat the Galactic Empire, and uh, the Galactic Empire has a new weapon called the Death Star. So this movie is focused on a little crew of rebels as they work together to take on the Empire. This takes place before the events of A New Hope, but after the events of Revenge of the Sith. New Hope being actually the first Star Wars movie, released in 1977, and uh, Revenge of the Sith being the sixth Star Wars movie, which is actually the third uh, movie in the actual sequential order, which was released in 2005. Don't get that mixed up with 2016's... Uh, the Force Awakens, which is actually the seventh movie in the series, and so on. This movie series is kind of convoluted in itself, and this first act of this movie does not help matters at all. It really feels too convoluted for its own good. I found the story to be predictable and a little cliche as it began. The movie throws out so much information at the audience, it kind of is overwhelming, and I, you know... It, ultimately, it's a war movie, it's a science fiction as well, about the Scrappy Rebellion. And it's a tragic tale, much darker than any other Star Wars movie. Um, and most of the cast I actually really do like. Unfortunately, the cast kind of comes and goes pretty quickly, so it's hard to get attached to any individual character. I started to not to care anymore toward halfway when I was like, well, what's the point? You know, I'm not going to see him in probably 20 minutes, so whatever. I did like the robot K2SO as my favorite character. He has some great dialogue and some great scenes. It's kind of a shame the robot steals the show from all the different humanoid characters. Like I said before, it's a darker, dark movie. Very gritty, and I actually really appreciate how well they handled these mature themes to make a compelling story. For one aspect of the plot, that is toward the end of the movie that I really hated, hated, was how one character saves another character. I won't really get into the details because that's spoilery, but I felt this um, saver method, this, I guess, white knight coming in to save the princess kind of thing, just doesn't work for this movie, and it completely robs a character of 
their arc. There was um, some fantastic cinematography here, and some really beautiful shots. The special effects are top-notch, and the computer graphics work well. Some of the people and characters are computer-generated, and I don't mind it. I did notice it, but I don't mind it. Now, overall, I did find the movie kind of confusing um, and predictable, and I didn't really care about the characters. I do enjoy this movie, but I didn't love it. Um, so without any spoilers, I do say this is actually a pretty good little movie. I just wish it had, the characters had more time to develop, and I wish that it was less predictable, and I wish that it, you know, the robot wasn't the main attraction here, because it really hypes up one character or two, and they don't really get their comeuppance, and they don't really get their, um, what's the good word for that? They don't really get their catharsis, and it, I feel denied as a movie goer, because they did not get what they deserved. They were robbed of that, and that really hurts the movie. So... Yes, it's a beautiful movie. Yes, it's a fun movie. It's a little bit confusing, and I still have problems with it. So overall, I'll give this a 7 out of 10. Enjoyable enough, but still not the best movie. I wish more time for the characters, and I wish it wasn't as confusing. But that's going to be it for me. Thanks. Bye. I have no idea we're coming. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make 10 men feel like 100. All right, so that's going to wrap up this podcast. Remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, love, whatever, heart it, be something. 3D or 2D.com can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And if you want to send us email, our email address is email 3D or 2D at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.